Hey, boys and girls, men and women. Uh, T uh, L G T B. Oh my God! If there's any of you, welcome to you as well. All human beings, a common denominator. Uh, I'm out at uh, Chester County Airport. It's December 29th, 2022. And it is about, I say, 1230. It's about 1230. Gorgeous day. Just beautiful day for flying. You know? <laughs> you know, we, we really do live set different lives over if you're around for 71 years like you like I've been um, I think of my 20s and I was trying to get a career going there but I also wanted to uh, look for a mate you know that's been a lifetime's worth of frustration <laughs> even though I've had my share of good times the whole thing about a regular meat just never worked for me. Um, that being said, mm, a gorgeous day for flying it is today, man. It's just incredible. Uh, not exactly Cavu, but pretty close. Really close. I mean, there's a few scattered clouds on the horizon, but like right here, and as far as I can see, there's no uh, obstruction of visibility. A little breeze, but not much, and um, just perfect for flying. I, well, anyway, I'm thinking about different lives, right? So, my 20s, I'm trying to get my career going. I am trying to get my pilot's license, too, and I ran into one crazy obstacle after another in that endeavor. The primary one being money. I wasted my money <laughs> paying for an undergraduate degree in... Uh, in English, <clears throat> and I uh, should have been learning how to fly. It's all water under the bridge now. Um, but, you know, so I, I, if you guys have been following me at all, you know that a big part of my professional career was photography slash aerial photography. And I had some... Um, amazing experiences with that in terms of uh, potential income and the joy of flying uh, I tell you it's just I flew all through the 80s um, doing aerial photography and other kinds of photography too but uh, that was aerials were always a component of my portfolio and I didn't have my I didn't get my pilot's license until 1989. So all those times that I flew for Fox Companies, Trammel Crow, Urban Engineers, IA Construction, oh God, on and on. Um, I had to get a pilot. And then I tell you, most of the times it was okay, but man, there was, there was one guy, I'll never, I'll never forget this guy, man. He's just, anyway, not a nice person. And I was paying him for God's sake. I'm too nice. Anyway, I always had to get a pilot. But then, you know, when I got my license in, in 89, I didn't need to hire a pilot anymore. I could just do everything myself. Um, but a day like today, you know, I, my photography career really went into gear when I left a, a full-time job at Delaware County Community College just to be a photographer. And so, and any given day, every waking moment, when you have your own business, you are always on the job. Every waking moment, you know, you're, I'm wondering, you know, how I'm looking for construction projects, you know. I don't do that anymore. I, I didn't do that for a while. But that inclination really paid off for me when I got the Exton Mall upgrade job from Lathrop Construction. And I had just gotten into Bell with an amazing career at 
you know, at my table. An amazing career. And it, 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 I won't go into it in depth, but suffice to say, you had to work at it. So really all you had to do. And there were so many people that didn't want to work at it. And then they would complain. It was, and the work was, for, compared to what I've been used to my whole life, this was like a, a walk in the park, you know? The job, I had to, I, I, they opened a small business, small and medium business division that was required to, make proactive outbound calls to small and medium business accounts on behalf of Bell Atlantic and develop a relationship. They never had to do that before 1996 Telecom Act. And then all the competition went away and suddenly, you know, Bell Atlantic is pretty frantic about losing their best margin customers, which is small and medium business. So it was brand new for them. I talked on the phone for some time uh, in various jobs. My, well, my photography business required that I uh, talk on the phone, but I worked for a call center too in Westchester, Pennsylvania. Uh, Intermedia marketing, IMM. <laughs> Minimum wage, no benefits. Like a sweat house, but you know they got students from Westchester University come and work there. You know, it's, it's within walking distance. It's so easy. It was like just a minimum wage type job. But that bridged my me into my career at Bell in, a, in an amazing way. And I, you know, I don't know if you guys believe in God or not, but and I, I've I've been on the fence on that issue a number of times. But whenever I think about getting that opportunity at Bell and what my circumstances, the context of my life then. I'd given up on photography pretty much at that point. Because man, when you got a family to support, hello, you know, the whole thing about being an artist and a starving artist and, and you know flying and being doing all these romantic things goes out the window. You got three kids to take care of, man. You gotta make sure they're okay all the time. They didn't live with me, but I had to you know, pay support. And plus I had to do extra things too, other things rather than just pay child support. But anyway, I'll get into that. My life, before I got into this career at Bell, all the time on a day like today, I'd be looking for targets to shoot. Uh, and lo and behold, I get the career at Bell. I'm living in Exton and I noticed some construction going on at the Exton Mall. I've told this story in another video too, but I just, you know, wanted to make sure that it's, it's out there and it's, you know, that if you try, I mean, for me, the best things that have happened to me have been a result of my initiative being and being proactive and not just sitting on my ass hoping something comes to me. Because it doesn't work, that that never works. I should never say never. But I don't, it's never worked for me, put it that way. I'm always looking for another angle or another opportunity somewhere, somehow. So I just, I just do some pictures of the Exton Mall thinking that, you know, I'll just give the construction company these pictures and I'll probably never hear from them again. Um, Lathrop Construction, they're out of Akron, Ohio. <laughs> Lo and behold, they call me and they love the pictures and they want me to do monthly aerials of this project. So not only do I get to keep my pilot's license current by flying these hours. I'm getting some money, extra money on, on the side too. And that's, yeah, what a, what a role I was on. And then looking back at it now, I'm thinking, well, it, it should have been different, but oh well, you can't change the past. Can you? I don't think you can. I know my dog wants to get out. I gotta get him out of the car. And make sure he walks around here. Um, and then they offer me full time. Uh, about six, seven months later, they decided all of their customers, all their projects, wanted the same thing I did for the Exton Mall. And I told the story in another video, but I priced myself. I thought I priced myself out of that opportunity because I'm not leaving Bell. I mean, for me to leave Bell, it would have to be. 
six-figure opportunity, and it was a six-figure opportunity. So let's make that a high six-figure opportunity. And it wasn't that big of a deal. And the and the um, the challenge was uh, considerable to, to do. A, and again, I refer you to the other video. I'll, I'll see if I can find the, the link to that video. I'll put it in the description. But long story short, I've tried to price myself out. You know, um, they had 40 to 60 targets all across the country. They wanted they wanted shot every month. If you stop and think about that for a second, for one person, that's impossible. Pretty much impossible. So I'd have to hire somebody to do it, to do it with me. I might have to hire two or three people. The the scale of this thing. Long story short, I, I I ended up not not doing the job for Lathrop because it would have required me leaving Bell. Well, leaving Bell, socially speaking, would have been a good thing for me then. Professionally speaking, it would not have been a good thing, only because all the health insurance, the health insurance benefits at, at Bell were unbelievable, and they were the best in the world. I just leave it at that. Uh, I would have to still get medical benefits for my children. Their mother never bothered, so. It was up to me, and I did, one way or another. I did. Um, yeah, the career at Bell really worked out nicely because that's what I wanted to do. You know, I love talking to business owners on the phone. I mean, it's always a fascinating story. You talk to a business owner and you find out how they did it and how they survived. Is you know through all the difficulties that goes into running a business, operating a business. Um, but so my life changed. I, I'm here at the airport. And I'm just thinking about how different my life is now. <laughs> I'm retired. I'm living on Social Security for the time being and a little bit of savings. And I'm, I'm enjoying not having the pressure to go out and you know make it or break it, you know it was like I, failure was not an option when it was when it came to taking care of my family. Here it goes a little Cessna. That's the airplane I flew for a long time. Cessna's uh, the 172 is just an amazing airplane, and you know. The one, Cessna 172, just briefly, going on a brief tangent here. The Cessna 172 is not a huge plane. It's one step up from their smallest plane, the 152. But it's, you know, you can fit three somewhat comfortably in a 172. There's room in the back seat for basically one person. It's just got a nice feel to it. And, uh, well, I miss flying Cessna 172s. And um, that's a fond memory I'll have, you know. S several fond memories, but that's one of them. So, back in the 80s and the 90s, before I got in with Bell, like a day like today, I'd be looking for targets, you know, shooting targets and trying to figure out how I can get more business. <sighs> I don't miss. I miss the flying from that time period and and the photography. Let me tell you, the qu equipment during the film photography before digital photography came in, the equipment sucked. I mean, I laid out five thousand dollars for a brand new system in 1994, I think it was. Brand new system, Bronica, medium format, and five grand. It was. I got two lenses with it, a couple of film backs. And I thought, man, this is it. I'm no more trouble with my equipment. It broke the first wedding that I used it on. It broke on me. It just stopped working. After five, dropping five Gs. On the, so the, the equipment now is much better. I mean, not dealing with film. Now, see you later, Kodak. I don't miss that company at all. Man. They just took their customers for granted. You know, That's the kiss of death. Anyway, I hope that's a cabo day for all you guys out there. And um, you see a pilot, you know, ask him how, how he feels about his job. I think a smile will come to his face. Any pilot that was a commercial pilot that, I, that I've met, that's not exactly true. Most of them. The airline pilots, man, what a gig they got now. I'll tell you, they got the gig of all gigs because they're highly in demand and there's shortage of pilots right now. And a uh, big, interesting career path. There's a dangerous side to it, though. 
don't make any mistake about that. There's a dangerous side and you should always be up on accidents that are happening and why they happen. And I'll tell you what, the twin props, uh, twin, twin prop airplane, I, I, I would feel queasy about getting in and flying, just flying in one of those. I don't really want to get in one. There's, there's so many things that can go wrong. It's just ridiculous. Mm. To put it in simpler terms, multiple points of failure, single points of failure. Okay, that's, I mean, they have some redundancy, you know, I guess, but there's just so many moving parts in a, in a reciprocating engine. I mean, that's why jet engines, turbine engines, took over aviation from, especially commercial aviation, from piston engines. The jet engines burn more fuel, but there's the maintenance on those things is dramatically lower than the maintenance on, on piston engines. There's fewer moving parts. You know, when you have so many moving parts, one little thing breaks and, and the whole thing goes down. Peace, y'all.